What's an apocalypse without playing a little god? Let's see here. Uh, carry the smile, add some scales, and I think I've got it. Uh... Oh no, I should not have tried playing God. In today's humble opinion, it's the end of the world as we knew it in Deponia Doomsday. When fans of the point-and-click adventure series Deponia demanded a different ending than what was delivered in the third installment of the original trilogy, Daedalic Entertainment replied in a pretty surprising way. That way was Deponia Doomsday, the well-envisioned and brilliantly executed fourth installment of the series that explores what happens when a creator tries to rewrite their world's story. Now, in order to talk about why this game is so special and unique, I'm going to have to talk about the stories of the previous games as well as this one, so unfortunately I'm going to have to stamp this review with a tremendous spoiler warning, so stop watching here if the series looks like something that would be interesting to you. Long story short, it's an immensely entertaining game, and if you're on good terms with the point-and-click genre, you might want to give it a chance. Now, while I haven't played any of the original Deponia games, the developers have done an excellent job at bringing you up to speed. I'm sure I missed out on a ton of references and historical significance in the exchanges between main characters, but I have a pretty good grasp of the key events. What we have here is your traditional Wall-E scenario. The humans of Earth advanced so far that they produced an inordinate amount of garbage and ditched the planet to live on the floating bastion city of Elysium, leaving loads of unwitting survivors to live in the junk world of Deponia. Rufus, the main character, saves Deponia by concocting a plethora of insane schemes to get to Elysium, one of which finally works. He uncovers the Elysian plot to destroy Deponia in order to propel Elysium to the planet Utopia and puts a stop to it, sacrificing himself in the end to do so. Naturally, many fans weren't pleased with the death of their beloved protagonist or what his death meant for Gull, his established love interest. The ending was pretty somber and people longed for something happier. Deponia Doomsday was the response to that outcry. From the very onset, the writers were already taking jabs at the notion of un doing everything that they've worked for. They open with Rufus waking up from a deep sleep, apparently having dreamt up the events from the previous three games entirely. Anyone with any sort of understanding of storytelling knows what a cop-out that sort of thing feels like, and even though it's tongue-in-cheek, it already creates the feeling of disappointment. The Rufus begins experiencing deja vu and realizes that reality is starting to follow the course of events that he dreamed of. Luckily for him, he stumbles upon a wandering time traveler capable of turning back time to try and give Rufus the perfect leg up in creating the ideal future. Or at least that's how Rufus sees it. Makrana Noggin just kinda wants to prevent time from unraveling, but fuck that guy. As the story progresses, it becomes increasingly complicated. Things don't play out quite the way Rufus imagined that they would. There are tons of time loop and paradox shenanigans and time traveling beings from the future come back to stop him as his ideal future is not without severe consequences. It turns out that his survival leads to Gull's death and the ultimate destruction of Deponia by his own hands, mostly due to the time traveling beings coming back to stop him and making it uninhabitable. By the end, the writers had doubled down on their stance and had two different Rufuses, uh, Rufi, Rufies, sacrifice themselves in order to save Gull and Deponia yet again. While this does give Gull's character a bit more closure than before, it definitely is not the happy ending that players had in mind, but but that's what makes it so incredible. They took the time to create an entirely new game just to teach players the importance of consequence in storytelling, which is that when you undo what a character does, you are undermining the significance of their actions. In Rufus's case, it was removing the value of his sacrifice and giving him an even harsher consequence for failing to make that sacrifice. But like Rufus is wont to do, he makes his point in a hopeful way, which is to say that he urges Gold to let him go, and instead of trying to change the way that things were meant to happen, see his actions for what they are and remember all of the great experiences that led up to it, to break free from the cycle and go on to do even more amazing things in the future instead of dwelling on the negativity. And of course, all of this is told over the course of a game that's smart in its humor and brimming with personality. The jokes are on point, the voice acting is on point, and the way that the developers tackled a few of the problems that plague many point-and-click adventure games make sure that it's flowing pretty well. That being said, there are a few things that could have been handled better. All of the time traveling makes a lot of things feel a bit repetitive, and a few of the puzzles rely far too heavily on trial and error, but for the most part, it's a solid game with a well-developed world and fleshed out memorable characters. Normally you can pick up Deponia Doomsday on the Steam store for the price of $19.99, but it has been on sale for as low as $6.79, at which point it is well worth the investment. As much as I love the game, I can't see spending more than $15 on a point-and-click adventure unless it's something phenomenal. Which again, though I liked it and I think it's an ingenious way of responding to criticism, that it's a labor of love for fans of the series makes it more special to that subset of people than it does for someone like me, so it doesn't quite break that barrier. 
Warrior. The Pony of Doomsday shows how much dedication and respect Dedelic Entertainment has for their fan base, though some fans seem to have missed the point and see it as a middle finger to their wishes. They asked for a different ending to which Dedelic responded, We hear you, but that's not how things work, nor is it how things should work, with a full-scale production of a fourth game in which they express time and time again the issues with listening to the whims of an audience. They could have just written a statement and let it in there, but they didn't. They made another fucking game, and it's packed with good times and plenty of sass that the players of the original series have come to love. It's a project of love, and it's a love that deserves an 8.5 out of 10. Thank you everyone for watching, and thank you Daedalic Entertainment for introducing me to the lovable idiot that is Rufus and his misadventures. I thoroughly enjoyed the story, and I'm impressed by your dual commitment to your audience and creative integrity. It's clever and it's catty, and it's exactly the sort of thing that I live for. I was pleasantly surprised. Glow on with your bad selves, and stay awesome, everyone.